Hey guys, Jason with JW Classic VW, and we are about to head down to the garage. It is going to be super hot down there, but it's time to get that gas tank out. So, a pretty good portion of this removal of the gas tank is going to be time lapsed, but it's time to get that center unit in there. So, we get this fuel gauge from Vintage Speed installed all the way and running so I can tell how much gas I got. No more running out of gas. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Good information coming. Probably because you've seen one before. This is a a uh, flywheel seal installer, and it's uh, not very expensive. And it's going to end up being the backing plate for my fuel setting unit on my gas tank. Because the whole idea of putting self tapper screws in my my gas tank, I really don't like it. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is when I put this in the tank. Back you guys up for a second. When I put the fuel setting unit into the tank, instead of having self tappers that go into the top of this, it's going to have a plate on the inside of the tank that I'm going to um, drill and tap for for hardware for bolts instead. And I think that that sandwiching effect, the sandwiching effect that's going to happen, is going to be a lot better seal, and uh, it'll work a lot better when it comes to installing this. So here we go. All right, to make it more clear, I'm gonna go ahead and illustrate it for you guys real quick how this actually works. Let's see if I can draw this. <laughs> so here's the gas tank inlet, gas tank. So there's my fuel tank, and my center unit's gonna be right here in the center area. Well, I think that's where it's gonna go right now. We're gonna have the, the rubber gasket that's on the outside, and then we're gonna have the actual center unit itself We'll just darken that in a little bit. Sending unit comes down in. And what we're making is a metal washer that'll go right here, allow, allowing me to sandwich the actual uh, top of the sending unit here between the gasket and the new washer. Yay! I'll be able to tell how much gas I have. Okay, so I've got the ring outline for the outer that I have to go ahead and cut down. The center is good to go on being big enough to get my center unit through it. And you can see that I've center punched all the screws that I needed, all the, the screw areas that I need to drill out for the, uh, the hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill those out now, and then uh, we'll go ahead and trim the outside ring so that we can get this in the gas tank. Um. Um... Uh. 
Hey guys, taking you away from the video for just one second, do me a favor, if you like what you're watching, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you already subscribed, great. Thank you very much for your support. Also, don't forget to enable notifications so you can get any future content on Goose and uh, Volkswagen stuff in general. All right, now back to the video. Okay, so we're looking up underneath the gas tank and you guys can see our fuel line. Whoa, <laughs> where's the gas tank? Here is the uh, fuel cutoff. This actually allows us to engage the reserve tank and it has uh, three positions. You have a position that is normal to where you have uh, no the reserve tank not engaged. You have in between the reserve tank and normal, which is the cutoff. And then you have all the way down which engages the, I think it's like 1.13 <laughs> gallons, so about a gallon of reserve. And then disconnect it from, uh, well, I wasn't disconnected from there, but I'll probably just crimp it and cut it. <laughs> crimp it and cut it will be a lot easier than trying to remove it from the, uh, from the uh, fuel pump. So first, we got to disconnect, we got to pull off this clip. And usually I just use a pair of, uh, needle nose to do this. Well, we'll see if we can get it with my... Oh, there we go, got it. You go. I'm gonna go inside real quick and pull it off. You guys can watch me pull off the uh, reserve lever. It is sweaty. It is humid down here. <laughs> so now I just gotta go ahead and uh, block this off. I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips and then cut the line. Mm, a little tighter. We don't want any getting by now. Mm, I think that should be good. Put a couple rags in here. Of our eggs. We're gonna probably get some fuel leakage going on, but uh, <clears throat> like I said, we do have the front end lifted up off the ground, so hopefully it's not that much, if any. But you don't want to not have anything there to catch it, right? And I'm gonna use my my BFG um, cutters. <laughs> These are made for cutting tin, but uh, they work great for other things. Mm -hmm. And snip. Hey, look at that. Almost no fuel leaking. Okay, guys, just like most other fuel tanks, this one has four uh, bolts that hold it in position. I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, fan back on. So this is going to be time lapsed. And go. So the fuel tank is still pretty full, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to drain some of the gas out into one of my empty jerry cans over here and go ahead and uh, try to get a little empty before I start uh, putting holes in it. <laughs> Well, while we're draining the gas, let's go ahead and take a look at something else from Vintage Speed that I'm really interested in. Oh, by the way, guys, Vintage Speed doesn't pay me for any of this. They just got some really cool crap. <laughs> here we go. Up in the corner over here, oh, you guys can see this badass, excuse me, this really cool exhaust. It's, uh, it's really cool because it has this um, Y-band hookups or O2 sensor hookups on both sides of the uh, exhaust so that you can get both the 1 and 2 bank and the 3 and 4 bank really accurate with using a Y-band. Y-band, what that does is it allows you to check your air to fuel um, mixture ratio whenever you're running your car so that you know that you're around that 13 to 1 is 
on most most uh, Volkswagen 13 to 1. I'm not sure on my 44s what it would be with my engine combination. I'm going to have to do some research on that, but that's the real way to, to find out if you got your air to fuel mixture uh, correct. So let's get back to draining this tank. Alright everybody, here goes nothing. The uh here's here's the deal with seal. The um I'm not sure if the top of this is exactly perfectly flat. <laughs> it might have a curvature to it. The um it I can't I'm not gonna be able to get all the gas out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweep the magnet through here and uh get the rest of the shavings out. But for the most part, I think that we're good. The sock should stop any major things, but here we go. <laughs> Mark some holes and get ready to do some drilling. Start small and work our way up on the uh, holes. So that's the way I need. Hold on one second. Yeah, I probably should drill those holes first. Huh? Okay, 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 we have a hole, a hole in the gas tank. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run my magnet down inside here and try to fish out some stuff. This, uh, this may be, um, hopefully there's not a whole lot of crap in there, but we're about to find out. Let's see if I can, uh, get you guys down in there a little bit. Zoom, zoom you down. Okay, so I'm gonna shine some light down in here and see what we see, guys. Oh, 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 so shiny. Yes, I put a hole in my gas tank. Let's not freak out about it, guys. Focus, baby, focus. Okay, that is just glue, I hope. Yes, that's just glue. <laughs> it's not a huge scratch. <laughs> Clean that off here in a second. Let me get my, my light. Look at you can see the thing down in the bottom of the tank. The piece that I, the piece that I cut out. Let's see if I can fish it out. Come here. Oh, I got it. Hey, it's covered in tape and gas. Okay. Look at you can see shavings all over it too. I'm gonna fish the tank out a little bit. Get some crap out of there. Ooh, yeah, I got some stuff down in that, in that tank. Before! It's, well, pretty clean. I got a little bit of stuff on there. Let's get the rest off. And now I'm going to sweep it, and we'll see what we come out with. Holy smokes. Look at that crap! Yeah, I'm going to fish. I'm going to sweep the tank a few times, guys. <laughs> Alright guys, as you saw earlier, I made this washer that goes on the inside of the tank, and this is going to be used to help uh, affix the uh, sending unit to the tank so that we don't have any issues stripping out self-tappers in the top of the tank. 
I can go ahead and just continue to use the 10 millimeter uh, bolts that I set up for it. So let's go ahead and do this and see how it goes. I'm going to try this magnet method and then if that doesn't work, we'll try something different. Okay, the way this, this should work is I can pick up, pick up with the uh, magnet and drag it over into place. So we'll see if this works or not. It is magnetic, so that's good. It's going to be interesting. If it drops down in, then uh, I guess we're just going to be fishing it out. Yeah, it's not strong enough to do that. That's not going to work. We're going to have to try another method that I have in mind. It's a little different. So you see what I'm doing is I'm trying to run some wire down in here to use instead of the tape. Because I don't think the tape, I think the tape will probably end up getting in my way. So you guys know what I mean though, right? You're tracking, tracking on what I got going on here. Yes, the wire. Oh yeah, you guys got it, right? <laughs> and I can just pull the wire out. Yeah, then I won't need anything. I won't need any stupid tape. And I can just pull the wire out once I get, got a couple of the screws in, and then uh, we should be good. And I can pull these out here in a second. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a couple of these ran in real quick. A couple of these screws. This is the ground. I'm going to have to open that up. Heck yeah. And then let's get the last one in. Look at that, man. Look, it was supposed to be there. There it goes. Yeah. Look at that, guys. We got a fuel gauge. Or a fuel sending unit is still word. I'm going to clean this tank off a little bit, though. She's a little dirty. Some glue, some tape, some other crap in there. But that is what I'm talking about. Okay, so I opened up the ground lug that came with the center unit so we can get it on here. And where did that go? I just hit my toe. <laughs> All right. Hey, look at this, guys. It's looking like it's a cine unit almost. The cine unit in all its glory installed. I really like the way it looks. It almost looks like it was meant to be there. It's pretty cool. It is definitely, uh, it was a good idea the way that I did it uh, with the washer on the inside to help snug everything down. I've got one more of these little brass clips to put on here. Let's see. All right, guys. So I like to use the right kind of clamp on all of my hoses that are fuel, you know, fuel hoses. And I'm also got a reducer here, which takes the five millimeter fuel hose and uh, makes it uh, compatible with the fuel pump that we installed, the electric fuel pump. So what I do is I go from the actual uh, five millimeter hose to the larger hose, which I think it's, uh, hold on a second. It is, I don't wanna lie to you. Uh, it's a 
dumping gas all the place. I think it's like five sixteenths. I could be wrong. Either way, I'm gonna link this stuff down in the description. So if you guys want to pick it up yourself, it'll be available for you. Got it on Amazon. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm an Amazon affiliate. So anything that you buy through my links down in the description below helps out the channel. So. Hey, if you need it, <laughs> you're going to buy it anyway, go ahead and use my link, guys. I appreciate it. The reason why these are so good is, like, unlike a normal hose clamp, these ones go all the way around the uh, hose so that you don't have... Dang, freaking zoom, dude. Zoom. There you go. They go all the way around the hose so that uh, you get a complete seal, and they work a lot better than the... Uh, the normal ones out there. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm like a pair of pliers to help get me this bad boy on there. This stuff's pretty cool too. It's used to dress up it just like wire loom. It's uh, pretty neat. It opens and expands. So you can put stuff in there easy. I'll link this down in the description as well. I'm gonna just use it to dress up some of my wires that I got going on here. All right, time for some electrical hookups. Easy stuff, man, easy stuff. Just follow the directions, right? Speaking of, I'll show you guys that real quick. I showed you guys this in part one, but here are the directions on what gets hooked up where. Alright, light brown goes to the ground, of course. It's kind of cool to know. Put the directions here, and let's go ahead and uh, run some stuff through. I'll show you guys how this works. I'm going to go the full length of the line, which is about right to here. About where I need it. And you just kind of like move it as you go. That's how it works. Move it as you go. Put your wires in. This is the fun part. Everything else was was fun. <laughs> Listen to anybody, oh, that's all fun. <laughs> the electrical is the fun part. You just kind of like smooth it along. Just like that. That's what I like about it, man. It goes on super easy. Oh, now I'm just a 
a little worn out. <laughs> I'm fighting with this gas tank. Fighting, fighting for you, goose. Alright guys, I'm gonna put the uh, fan back on. So, on the rest of the wiring, it's pretty straightforward if uh, you know what you're working with. <laughs> if you're not sure on your wiring diagram for your particular car, your particular, I'm sorry, your particular Beetle, or whatever the heck it is that you're driving, transporter, uh, bus, carbon gear, square back, notch back, whatever you're driving, it's going to be different. So for for mine, the uh, the gray wire goes to a dimmer, which I'm guessing gray is white. Let me see. Short white color wire. Yeah, this one. So this one goes to the dimmer, which is number 58 on mine, on the very bottom of my stuff here. So you can see how everything is right. <laughs> a lot of power here and possible grounding of something so what I'm gonna do is disconnect my battery real quick and then continue on with this portion of the install so give me one second like I was saying the white is going down to this gray wire down there on the uh, on the uh, the light switch because it's a dimmer switch so I'm gonna try to get this loosened up and then we'll strip it down and hook it up that was not very tight anyway. So loosen it up some. I'm gonna cut this to size because I don't want 15 feet of uh, extra hanging out in here. That's all I need. It's actually probably too much there. Yeah, yeah it's too much still. I don't like a lot of extra wire flying around, guys. If you haven't figured it out. This is pretty thin stuff. I'd say this is probably like 22 gauge uh, wire. So I'm doing the, what I've my fold over method, which I usually just take the uh, the copper if it's super thin and then fold it over to give me a little bit of extra. All right, come on, feed you down in there. Be nice. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. And then I'm going to jump her off of one of these light bulbs right here, probably this one, over to a light bulb. I'm going to plug into the to the top of the unit so I can have a, a light, light on it because that's just super cool. Tightening it down pretty good. And this is, once again, number 58 on your light switch. Is usually your dimmer. Okay, now uh, on to number 15 for the ignition switch, which, if you ride it over from here, 15 is your black wire. So I'm just going to come over to this side, and my black wire 15 comes out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and run my number 15, my black wire, right to the top on the back side and that is ignition on dang that thing was loose too maybe we'll come back here with some loctite loctite some of these bad boys down you know old cars like this over time you know you're gonna have stuff loosen up on you especially with this fuse box is is old 62 years old i think it's original that's why I was looking at Wolfsburg West the other day, and they've got them. I was like, ooh, hey, Wolfsburg West coming through. Did that go in there the first time? Sure as heck looks like it did. That's cool. 
Yeah. And the last one, the brown, is the ground. Brown is the ground. And I have a ground right here for my wiper motor. So that works out good. Last wire. And it's going to be right up to here. Right up to there. And normally these lugs have like their own color on them, but I don't go off of that. You know, I just, I have everything kind of black anyway. I think you might see a couple things in here where I left them on there, but it's uh, for the predominant, predominantly in my car. I like to run black, black, uh, black heat shrink because I think it looks better. Yeah, that's good. Black heat shrink. I'm really trying not to uh, knock my headlight back into <laughs> inside the, the, the can there because every time I lean on my fender on the driver's side, I always have to pull my headlight back out <laughs> and mess around with it, readjusting it because uh, I knock it in. So I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. We'll see. All right. Last lug, and i got to loosen this up and put the ground on. And what I have coiled up here is my horn wire. If you guys are curious, like, what's that other crap you got on there, Jason? That's my horn wire. Yeah, see how it does its own little thing there? Yeah. So we're just going to put this underneath this washer right there. Flip you over. Come on. Flip over. There we go. Good. And then that should be good. Put it back up top. And then let's hook up the battery and see what we got, man. See if uh that I installed it. Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta put my light on here still. Dang it, almost almost getting excited, man. Getting excited. Come on now, work work with me here. I know you all talk to your car too, so don't don't actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let's turn these grounds out a little bit. Right. Very good. Not too tight. It's good enough. Good. Good, good, good. Alright everybody, it's the moment of truth. <laughs> we have a fuel gauge. Now, I wonder if it's blinking if that means like it's just low. Wait, a light. Oh, and a light. That looks <laughs> that looks so cool, man. Super rad. Awesome. Let me put some gas in there and see if it uh, goes away if we uh, put a little fuel in there. Alright guys, I uh, put the gas back in that I drained out of the tank, so let's see what it does now solid that's what it is when it gets uh when it gets low it uh 
it uh, starts blinking at you. Let's see if the dimmer's working. Oh, uh, yeah, the dimmer's working. Cool. I think it's working. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's working on the light bulb anyway. Very cool. Very cool. Make sure we got fuel in there. Yeah, everything is good. Very good. Awesome. Well, guys, it's time to button it up. I am hot, sweaty, need a shower. Uh, it's it's awesome. I love the vintage speed uh, fuel gauge. It's pretty cool. I like the little light on it. It's awesome. If you like what you saw today, do me a favor, hit that subscribe. If you haven't done so already, if you're a subscriber already, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Uh, check out the uh, details below on more information about this uh, install. That's it, guys. Uh, there was a car show today that I didn't make it to because of uh, just a bunch of other stuff. I really wanted to go to that car show, too. Hey, if you guys want a channel sticker, do me a favor, join the Facebook group, and I will send you one. Just got to hit me up with a, a PM or IM, whatever it is, and then uh, send me your address so that I can send you a sticker. Awesome, guys. Until next time, this is Jason with JW Classic VW.